So I'm literally wrapping up the edit of this video and I'm sitting here and I saw JT from New Layer start this conversation about like working out with Nanlite who makes a lot of the lights that I use. And then like Aperture responded to me in that thread. And before I knew it about 10 minutes in and I am, this is one of the most hilarious threads I've like ever been a part of on Twitter. It looks like JT is going to try to put together some workout competition between like creators and the lighting companies, Aperture, Nanlite. I, I don't know if this is real or not. I guess in a world where Logan Paul can fight a undefeated professional boxer, then why can't creators and lighting companies uh, do pull up challenges? I don't know, they were talking about winning prizes and stuff. So Aperture, Nanlite, I don't know if you were being serious. I think I saw JT says may make something for his channel. So I'll leave a link to his channel down below, but leave a like if uh, you guys want this to be a real thing, a workout challenge for creators and winner wins lights. Um, okay, let's just get to the video. Welcome to my living room. Now, when you look at this composition and this scene, there's nothing necessarily inherently wrong with it, right? And when it comes to lighting, I mean, I got my key light right here, we've got some natural window light, and then we have a bunch of practicals. But with those practicals, there's a lot going wrong. First of all, in this light right here, there's actually a bulb missing because like two or three go in there, one of them is burnt out. This is a slightly different warmer tone than this light, which is different from this light. And then in this hallway, we have a much cooler new LED bulb. Now to a DP, someone who likes to have control over the lighting, the composition, the color temperatures of everything, that is a total nightmare. And so that's why today Today, I'm stoked to test out the Aperture B7C 8 light kit. Now, this isn't necessarily a brand new product. It's been out for a little bit of time and Aperture sent it out to me a little over a month ago. So that way I would have a good amount of time to play with it. I actually just recently used it on a short film that we actually got honorable mention, one of 12 over 700 submissions uh, for the Russo brothers for the Agbo Film Festival. So, yay. Go team. If you wanna check out that short film, it's finally live. You can check it out in the link in the description. Go comment and say that you came from this video. But yeah, so these bulbs, I have been wanting something like this for years. Actually, late last year, I shot a short film where the entire set uh, was lit with one light bulb suspended from um, just a typical wire. And I used a kind of cheap, I think it was like a Life FX uh, smart bulb or something. And so, you know, I could change uh, the color temperatures and the RGB colors and um, it was Bluetooth. I could control it from my phone. And so it was decent, but it still wasn't perfect because it was missing some of the key components that a good filmmaking light has. One, color accuracy, that thing, again, for the average consumer, it's a cool RGB light bulb, right? It's just not going to have the same color accuracy that these bulbs are going to have. The other thing it was missing was power options. Obviously, it was a regular light bulb, so it had to be in a socket. Now, we were in the middle of a garage, so there were outlets nearby, but it was still kind of a hassle because we had to run um, the actual like light hanging cable um, straight down from the ceiling, and then I had to duct tape a bunch of extension cords to the ceiling. One of the outlets wasn't working, so we had to completely reroute all the cables to the other side of the garage. It was just a lot of wasted time. So the fact that these have both options where you can run straight into a regular light socket and power it through AC, uh, through the wall like normal light bulbs would work. Or you could be out in the middle of the nowhere or some place that you don't have easy access to power and run it off of the internal battery, which at max output will give you over 70 minutes of runtime. And in my use case, that's been fairly accurate. And a lot of times I'm not even using it at full power. You know what, speaking of what they look like, let's go ahead and fix the scene. So I'm going to replace one, two, three, four, five, and six light bulbs. So that way we can get a consistent look for these practicals. Let's go ahead and replace some light bulbs. By the way, before removing either these bulbs or any bulbs, 
uh, know that most of the time they get very hot. So I don't have any grip gloves on me right now. Um, so I'm just gonna give them a few minutes to cool down and then I will replace these guys. All right, so now we've got them all installed. Now we're gonna go ahead and mess around with the app and I'm gonna show you how to change the color temperatures and all that in a second. But the first thing I do wanna point out, which can be a con, is the actual size of them. So this is the little light bulb that was in here. Now, because there are no fans in here, it is uh, just passively cooled through the metal housing here. It is significantly larger and significantly heavier. So if you have a really small light fixture, you will see it kind of stick out or um, it may feel a little kind of wobbly or something like that. So keep in mind that, you know, you can look at the lamps I have here. I mean, these are all hanging. They're not like ridiculously heavy. These aren't about to fall out of the ceiling or anything. But if you have a light fixture that easily topples over, you may wanna find a way to secure it better because this is a lot heavier uh, than this. Also, they do have this kind of unique design to it. So here's another kind of traditional bulb that I pulled out of one of the lights. Uh, if you're doing a close up or anything like that, you'll also be able to tell the difference just because from the side, it looks okay. Um, if you get the top part here, it has that kind of traditional bulb look. But if you kind of, you know, if it's upside down and you're shooting underneath, uh, you're not gonna have that kind of total round look. So again, I'm guessing this has to do with the cooling, maybe the light output. I'm not exactly sure the purpose of this design. I'd be curious, Aperture, let me know what the reason why you didn't go with just a traditional kind of fully rounded bulb look compared to uh, this look. I'd be really interested in that answer. All right, so now let's go into the Sidus Link app. I didn't end up replacing this one because it was too hard or whatever. So we'll just match it to uh, this color temperature. So let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five. And here on the app, we see one, two, three, four, five. So we can see all of our fixtures, the rest obviously are still in the case. So I can easily turn them on and off with one. I can change the intensity. So this is 100% on all of them. Now I can also go in and individually turn them on and off. Um, so if I want this one to go off at a certain point or I can slide and change the intensity so I can dim that one down a lot. Uh, these back ones I kind of do want to dim down a bit. So I'm going to go down to about 50%. And this one, because the lamp is more diffused, I want to keep it at 100% because if I go all the way down, you really start to lose it. Uh, because my key is relatively bright, uh, it already isn't sticking out too much. If this were at night, a night scene, this one would be a lot more prevalent. Um, and then of course we can go in and uh, change the uh, color temperature of everything. Now, if I wanted to go for some party thing, I can go to the palette and go like green or something. I'm going to just say all the fixtures. And now we can see that they've all turned green. <laughs> Now, once I've set up the group, I can actually go into that group one since I have them. Now I can change from very cool to very warm. And again, the nice thing is compared to the LifeX or uh, the Philips Hue lights, here I'm actually getting numbers that I'm used to seeing on lights. I'm getting my Calvin for color temperature. I'm getting my green and magenta uh, shifts that I can change. And of course the intensity uh, everyone has, but it's just nice to be able to be like, okay, I want to set this to daylight balance in any other app. I would just have to like kind of guess it and get it close to there. Um, or if I want to match a light bulb that's around 2400, make it really warm, then I can go for like this. Wow, this is very heavily diffused. I promise that it is on. You can see right there. <laughs> Maybe I should have done this at night, but you can see those fixtures really nicely. Kind of looking a bit uh, ugly. That's because I have my green shift really harsh. So that looks nice and warm. Now, again, if I wanted to match this hallway, for example, 
<laughs> actually grabbed the box for uh, this light here. Now just eyeballing it, I thought I put this around uh, 5100K on the actual box for the lights, uh, has lighting facts, and it says that it's 5000 Kelvin. So again, the nice thing is I can just set it right at five and boom, now that's matching. So maybe you have a light that you have existing on the set and you just want everything else to match to it. That's really simple and easy to use. Now with the Sidus Link app, you can get pretty crazy. You can link these to other aperture lights and do some crazy effects. Um, I haven't used any of that, so I'm just gonna shoot some aperture B-roll over top of this section because I just haven't been in a situation where I have to use any of those features. All right, so now that we've got the scene looking a little bit better, more consistent, a little bit more power output back there, so it's a little bit more prominent in the scene, we've got it matched to the other light in the hallway, things are looking a little bit better there. Now let's go back to the design of each ball real quick. One thing that I love that they did is have the instructions engraved onto the side. So these bulbs are also very different because they have controls on the bulbs themselves. So if you never use the app um, or you just need to change one bulb uh, manually, you can just grab it at any time. And there's a power button, there's a plus and a minus, and so obviously by default, the minus and plus are to change the intensity uh, and the power button. If you press and hold that, that turns it on or off. But then you can also do things like change from the AC to DC power. You can change the color temperature. And if you forget how to do that, you simply just look on the side and I can see that to change uh, my CCT switch um, is power, uh, so I double click the power. So one, two, and now we're in a warm. And then there's a couple other shortcuts that you can mess around with, but it is nice to have individual control right from here. So again, if you're on set and you just need to quickly unscrew and change the intensity of a bulb, and you don't wanna have to go find the person who has the app or anything, you can absolutely easily do that. Now we've talked about the individual bulbs, which of course you can buy as a standalone product, but one of my favorite things about the eight light kit is the fact that it comes in this case. Now this isn't a normal Pelican case. This is a fully custom case that you may have already seen it as a little outlet out here. That's super cool. Uh, and when you first open it up, you can see that you have eight slots. Uh, for the various bulbs, laser cut out whatever foam. Um, and what's cool about these is you don't have to like unscrew them. They kind of created this quick release system. They kind of just wiggle it and pull it out, give it a little bit of force. And then you kind of just push it back down and it sits in there super secure. It's not coming out as I dropped the power cable, however. But as you noticed off to the side here, uh, it comes with extra fuses. So for whatever reason, if you do blow a fuse, easy access right there. Then it's awesome because you literally just take this power cable out, plug this into the wall, flip the on switch, and now you're charging all of the lights at the same time. Now Aperture recommends that you, of course, charge the lights when they're off. Um, they will still charge when they're on, but of course that's not the most efficient, pretty common sense. Uh, but the other big thing is that when you are charging them, when the case is plugged in, keep the lid open. Do not close it whether the lights are on or off because of course when they're charging, they're still going to heat up and because when it's closed is such a tight snug fit, of course you open up to the ability of fires or just overheating and burning something or, or ruining something. So when you're plugging in the case to charge them, always leave. Uh, the case open, so nice to be able to put them all in there. You have the charging case. Uh, the only thing about this case is that it's not waterproof. My guess is that the majority of it is, but the fact is that this cover is exposed. I'm a little bit surprised it didn't come with like a rubber cap that kind of flips down. This is a very standard power cable outlet. Actually, I may go online and just I'm sure for like a dollar, you can find a bunch of rubber caps and I may just get one to put in right there. Not to necessarily make it waterproof, but just to make sure any accidents or dust, debris gets in there. And one other big use case that kind of just popped into my head uh, that this has been very useful for is flickering 
or lack thereof. Anytime you shoot high speed footage, a lot of times you will see a lot of flickering going on from traditional light bulbs. And it's not just crazy like slow motion cameras or anything. If you adjust your shutter angle or shutter speed at all, you'll usually see flickering happen. Now again, since these are made for the purpose of filmmaking, uh, you're not gonna see any flickering well, up to at least 120 frames per second on here, 240 on my iPhone. That's the highest frame rate I have access to right now. And I didn't get any flickering at all. So who should buy these lights, right? That's one of the most important things is who are these kind of made for? Because kind of like a specialty macro lens or something, it's not really meant to be your first purchase. If you're just getting into filmmaking, you don't have any lights at all. This probably isn't going to be the first light that you buy. And Gerald Undone did a good test on this, whether or not these could be your key light. And I think he only used one. It was obviously very dim, not going to be too good. And you can see here with thicker levels of diffusion, you almost can't even see the light. These are meant to be for practical use, kind of background lights, so to speak. Now, I think you could use these as a key in a special type scenario. Again, that short film that I shot last year, this would have been perfect for, but that was a completely blacked out garage with a single light bulb hanging from the ceiling. So the light bulb looked really bright in the environment. But if you're a content creator or filmmaker and you want to have more realistic controlled sets, then this absolutely can be a great addition to any lighting kit. Practicals are the most often overlooked pieces to any set. They're subtle, but they can absolutely elevate the look and just the overall aesthetic to any composition or filmmaking thing that you're working on. So if you're interested in picking one of these up, you can check them out in the link in the description below. Huge thanks to Aperture for sending this out for me to test. There was no money exchanged. This isn't a sponsored video. They didn't pay to see this. They haven't seen it before me posting it for you guys. So take that information and judge it however you want. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.